Good morning. We are back again at Black Cherry and we're doing feel a dough again because apparently if you get a phone call in the middle of it, it totally cuts out the audio. So we're going to do this again and we're going to hope and pray that it works. Today we're talking about phyllo dough and all the different kinds of phyllo dough brands, whether or not it's thick or not thick. And so I thought we would kind of go through all the different kinds at Black Cherry. As you can see, this whole top row here, and it goes all the way down that side too, off camera, they're all different kinds of phyllo dough. So first, we're going to start with Apollo. So Apollo, it's not a bad phyllo dough, but what I don't like about this particular dough is that um, it's too short for my pan. So when I use this for baklava, it ends up cooking when it cooks it shrinks up and i can't get as many pieces out of this box than when i use that box the other thing that is not preferable for me is that it has actually more sheets than i want in this box so this box because it's a little bit narrower they actually add more sheets to make up a pound of phyllo dough so where this box, let's do it right side up, has about, let's say, 26 to 28 sheets of phyllo dough, this box has about 40 sheets of phyllo dough. So I end up with more phyllo dough than I need. And of course, I save it and it goes in my fridge and then it gets hard because I don't ever use the extra phyllo dough. So it's not bad, but I think this was made specifically for um, Greek baklava. And I think this fits in those those Greek baklava pans perfectly. And if they do the triangles like they do, then this is the one that you would want to use because Greek baklava is higher and it uses more phyllo sheets than the Turkish one. So if you're making Greek baklava, I probably would go with the Apollo. And I want to point out that as you can see on the front, it says a number four phyllo sheet. Four. Can you still hear me? Can you give me a thumbs up if you can still hear me? Because my phone just went cuckoo. So anyway, we're going to keep going. And um, if you can't hear me, please let me know. And I will log out and log in again. Um, baklava filo is a number four, which is thinner. And you'll always know that that's the one because it'll say number four in all of the boxes. If you look on the thicker one, which is for the savories, it's going to be a number seven. Oh, where's the thing? Right here, number seven or a number nine. So they're a little thicker. And then let's see, that was Apollo. We're going to go to Indo-European. So Indo-European is a new brand that they're carrying here at Black Cherry. This is again a number four. This fits your pan exactly, so you don't have to trim it. It doesn't shrink, but the it doesn't have as many dough, sheets of dough as I would like. So um, I've tried it and uh, it's okay. It doesn't stick together, but it's not exactly my favorite kind of dough. Dennis, can you tell if I am actually have the volume or not? Because I lost it. I am? Okay. Good. All right. We're going to go on to Golden Flake dough. Now, I had to use Golden Flake dough one time a few years ago when my favorite dough was out of stock. And I have to say it was not my favorite. This one was the least consistent out of all of them because um, it felt like it was uh, defrosted and frosted and refrozen as it went back to the market. What happens when phyllo dough is defrosted and then freezes again is that it gets a big, huge, sticky line going all the way through the phyllo dough. So when you unroll it, there are these long lines that stick together and then you have to pull it apart and piecemeal and it's a big pain in the ass, let me just tell you. So this 
I went through six boxes and I would have to say most of them were all kind of stuck together and it made for a very grumpy experience. And grumpy experience means for grumpy food and we all don't want grumpy food. So this was my least favorite. Now we're gonna go on to my favorite, favorite, favorite phyllo dough. So my favorite phyllo dough is this phyllo dough. Again, it's a number four. And the reason why I like this dough is it's consistent in the amount of sheets that it has in a box. Now, you wouldn't think that phyllo dough would be so disproportionate in their sizes of the sheets, how many sheets they put in, how wide or how narrow the sheets are, but they are. And it is the most frustrating when you have your system and your formula for cooking baklava or whatever you're cooking to get another brand of dough that messes with your measurements. This one has been the most consistent. I usually have to trim off about two finger or an inch and a half of the dough from the side to make it fit the pan. But then I save those little strips and I use it in other things, whether or not I wrap asparagus in it or I use it as like a little crunchy bottom to a pie. There's all different things you can do with the extra little bits. So this is my favorite one. I think I've probably only gotten one or two bad boxes where it's like the end of the roll of dough where you can see the jaggedness along the bottom. All right, now we are going to go into thicker dough. And why do you need thicker dough? So thicker dough is mainly used for savories like burek where you have the more moist fillings and you need the thicker dough in order to uh, be able to handle the moist fillings like a meat or a spinach and onion or a feta cheese. So as you can see, let's see if I can align this. So there's, as you can see, let's get this here. These are the two different brands. So the bottom one, the Zaragut, which is my favorite, is a number nine. And then the Fontis is a number seven. So these are about twice as thick as the regular sheet of baklava dough in order to handle the, the, the more moist fillings that go inside. Yes, you can use two sheets of the phyllo dough, but phyllo dough just by its nature dries out faster. So it will take you a longer time to get through like counting out two pieces, brushing them with butter and then rolling it. It will take you longer and it'll probably dry out faster than if you just got one box of these and then did your uh, your burek or however you want to roll your stuff or make your pan of a savory in one of these. This one, I've tried this one. I found that the size was inconsistent to the pan. So sometimes it fit my pan. Sometimes it was a little narrow. Sometimes the edges were jagged. It, it wasn't my favorite. I used it, I tried it, but at the end of the day, I much prefer this brand because this brand has always been consistent. And um, there are some recipes on the back on how to make the cheese and the beef burek, which is kind of the most common kinds of burek that you wanna do. And uh, I prefer these. I think there is a misconception, and I totally say this all the time, that the karai of dough, I always say it's like shredded phyllo dough because it's the easiest way for you guys to conceptualize what kadaif is. But kadaif is actually not shredded phyllo dough. It's actually its own kind of dough and it's made in its own kind of way. So whereas, you know, phyllo dough is just a flour and water dough that you start off with a small little ball like this and you roll it out to be the size of like a dining room table and then cut it into the pieces. This one is actually like a batter. So it's a very thin, thin, thin batter that there's this really cool machine and it's, it's big and round and it's hot and it spins. And it's kind of like a big grill. The, the batter through the top and it sieves all the way down. And as it drips down, then it gets on the griddle and it cooks in a spiral thing on the griddle and then it creates the karayif dough. 
So that's kind of how that all works. So it's actually not shredded dough, but it's actually its own This StreamYard thing is driving me bonkers. Okay, we are back. <laughs> it is being all kinds of wonky today, but I fixed it. We're good. All right, we're back and we're talking Kadaif. So again, Kadaif is its own dough. And <laughs> this is definitely an adventure trying to get through this Philo dough explanation kind of video. I am not coming back for a third time. So kadayif is more of like, I guess, a crepe batter. So I guess that's the only equivalent I can come up with, but it's even thinner than a crepe batter. And you put it through the sieve and then it heats on this little rotating kind of griddle. I think the coolest thing that a lot of people don't know is that here in Utah, in Salt Lake City, there is actually a warehouse where this Greek guy imported um, a filo dough making machine, a barek dough making machine, and a kadeif dough machine from Greece. And you can make it actually right here. So it's still in a warehouse. Apparently they don't know what to do with it because this, the Greek guy passed and they're trying to figure out how to handle this factory. So I think it would be very cool if we could all kind of like join together and figure out how to use these you know, dough making machines to be able to produce our own dough here in Salt Lake. I think that's pretty damn awesome. I haven't figured out how to acquire big, huge factory making machines yet though, but it's on my list. All right, the next thing I wanna to talk to you about is um, puff pastry. They also have puff pastry here at um, Black Cherry. And the nice thing is they have these big wide puff pastry sheets. And what I love about these big wide puff pastry sheets is that you literally can open them up and put them directly on your pan. Fill them whatever it is that you want, put the other layer right on top, cut it and stick it in the oven. And I try to keep one of these in my fridge or in my freezer. And I call it kind of like my leftover dish. So if I've made extra of, let's say, some chicken or some meat or some roasted vegetables, and I want to do something to make the dinner a little bit different, I will pull out my puff pastry and I will roll it. I will put it right on my sheet of my pan, you don't need any butter or anything. And I will layer on all of my fixings and then I'll cover, you know, put it all back together and then cut it. Why, I don't know what's going on here. Hold on a second. I've lost my banner, Ah, whatever. We're just gonna move forward. Um, cut it up and put it in the oven at like 400 and you'll have this nice crispy puff pastry dish and you're reusing leftovers in a different way. And if you don't want to use the full sheet, they also have these small squares. And the nice thing that I like about these squares is that one, I don't know if you can tell, in between each square is a piece of um, wax paper. So you can just pull it right off as you need it and you can make your little pockets and your little bundles with your little leftovers and then you can pop them back in the freezer and or you can pop them in the oven they are so user friendly they're so easy to keep on hand and i just love having all these different kinds of doughs to play with i don't think you should be afraid of phyllo dough and puff pastry dough i think you should just embrace it because it's very forgiving when you put it in the oven nobody knows if something is torn or not Let's see, do I have any comments? I don't, I don't know why I have StreamYard scrolling across the bottom of my thing, but we actually made it through without me losing my audio. So I think that's a win. And um, I think we're cool for right now. Please experiment with Philo Dough. Understand what there's different things for different. Oh my God, this is just ridiculous. StreamYard does not want me to do filo dough videos, apparently. So I am gonna say goodbye before it kicks me off for good. All right, so until we meet again, 
I will talk to you later.